Today I've built the social networking app that you see here. It allows users to post updates about Volt to an activity stream. As you see, I'm logged in as myself, and other users have also left comments. You might notice that the delete button only shows up next to comments for which I am the author of. For instance, this comment here, there's no delete button because I didn't make it. The behavior seen in the UI is possible by hiding the delete button with the if binding that you see highlighted here. Even if we did forget to disable the delete button, Volt handles permissions in the back end, so we're safe from sneaky behavior inside the browser. So here we are back in the UI, and I've disabled that if binding, and as you see, nothing happens when I try to delete this. You might wonder how I could enforce permissions safely since most of the Volt code is running inside of the browser. Let's take a closer look. When I've worked with other rapid prototyping frameworks in the past, I've often been surprised to find that user management and permissions were not included by default. The great thing about Volt is that it comes with the concept of users and permissions built in. You don't need to worry about handling authentication or authorization logic from scratch because it's part of the framework. And that's what you saw in the example that, just there. Okay, let's get started. The first thing I did was reset the project to a basic starting point. It's just HTML. I'll show you how to add the functionality piece by piece as we go. As with most projects, the first thing we're going to do is generate a model using the volt g model command. The headline model is going to house a field called body, which will hold all of the displayable text. And above that, I'm going to make sure that the model always has an owner. And we do that by typing own by user. This allows our model to compute permissions that we're going to build on later on. Let's talk about the view logic before jumping too deep into permissions. If you haven't learned about Volt views yet, check out episode 3 on the blog to get up to speed. I added some basic content bindings for us to keep track of message and user counts, and a basic each binding to iterate over the collection of messages in the database. There's also an if binding to hide and show the delete button. It's not quite ready yet, but you can see this can delete method here. This performs a lookup on model permissions. Model permissions are public by default, and since we haven't defined the permissions yet, the page still shows the delete button to all users. I'll show you how to lock things down once we finish up here. For the submission form, there are two things we need to do. We need to add this eSubmit binding, and this is going to attach the submit event to a controller action that has not yet been written. So submit headline would be the name of the controller action. But like I said, we haven't written that yet. We'll get to that here in a sec. We're also going to add a two-way data binding to the text box that's going to attach to the headline body attribute of page. If you remember, page is where we store temporary non-persistent values in our applications. And of course, like always, we're using the underscore notation for attributes. In the previous scene, I attached an eSubmit binding that calls submit headline. Let's implement that method now. This method calls a database create action. All actions performed on the store object return a promise. This means that we need to write a dot then and a dot fail method. I will reset the headline body variable to clear the form out if the headline successfully saves. But if it fails, I will put a warning message into the flash store. Error objects are key value pairs, so this method that helps us here called add error will make the error human readable when it's displayed in the flash. Going back to the headline model, it's time to add fine-grained permissions. We can do this by calling the permissions method at the class level. As you see here, I'm allowing anybody to publicly read or create headlines, but we don't want people deleting or updating things unless they're the owner. Worth mentioning is that the permission systems allows a very low level of granularity. 
In my use case, I'm controlling permissions at the record level. But what if we want fine-grained control over individual attributes on a model? We can do that. If I did this, it would deny non-owners access to the body field, but still leave other attributes open for modification. Like I already said though, we won't need that much control today. So let's put it back to how it was. Let's try it out. Here I am logged in as two different users. There we go. Real-time data updates and view rendered based on the user permissions. Very cool. One more thing worth mentioning. If you ever find yourself needing to work with permissions outside of the browser, there is a helper method called as user that will execute a block within the context of a certain user. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to grab myself out of the database and store myself in a variable called me. Now I'm going to make a new headline record from the console without being logged into the browser. And as you see there, the data update was automatic to anybody who was logged into the application. Just for dramatic effect, I'll add it a couple more times. As you see, everything's very snappy. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Sign up for our newsletter at datamelon.io for more Volt and Opal related content. Drop us a line if you have any questions or requests for future episodes. Thanks and see you next week.